Today is May 31st, 2019, and this is episode 150 of Plane Savers! Good morning, everybody. Today is day 50, 5 0. Benjamin's yes. here. Norma's here. Fred's here. Robert's here. Benoit's here. Stella's here. Uh, Simon's here. Everybody's here. We're getting the airplane ready to go. Uh, it is air show weekend, as you can see. We got airplanes. I think these are the Skyhawks over here. Hi, Skyhawks. <laughs> and uh, down here we got uh, Yaks. Uh, was that uh, Vampire over there? Chronos stuff. All the airplane school stuff. Doing really good. So uh, we're continually working during the air show. Stella's been hard working on the fence here. And uh, yeah, I'm a little concerned. During the air show, they're probably going to be playing music. And not just the regular riveting, but music. Uh, so it's gonna be hard to shoot around the music because of YouTube's copyright stuff um, But uh, we're looking pretty good. Uh, we got to set up here. We got the CF 100 uh, And we got the two booths here uh, where Benoit and Robert so Robert's gonna be the Montreal Museum uh, Benoit and that are gonna be working on the uh, uh, The new museum and uh, yeah, we're all looking all fun and games folks it is going to be looking good the snowbirds just took off i think they're going to be doing a practice here pretty soon uh yeah it is one heck of a day and uh let's see what today will bring us norman what's happening changing the oil and the air from the engine there <laughs> yeah. no filter now uh, we're painting this part here uh, this color here you see it yeah, giving the nose case a good little refresher. Uh, as you can see, this is the higher time engine. This one is the lower time engine. And uh, yeah, we are. Stella's working on the fence. I need a beer! She says she needs a beer. Um, hey, Stella. It, wait, Stella, is that West Berlin or we. Where, where am I? What? Bonjour, Bobby. Bonjour. How's How, it going? How's everything going today? Very good. Getting more serial numbers. I'm trying to I'm trying to block the copyrighted sound. I'm kind of like hurdling yeah, the mic here. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna... the, the engine sound ruining music. <laughs> Horrible. Yeah, so hopefully if anybody's watching, make sure to be extra loud so we don't get any of those copyright claims. If you're new to YouTube, uh, even a few seconds of a copyright song can ruin a video, so. Hello. Hello, bonjour. Hello, hello. Okay, we're back away from all that uh, copyright infringing music. We're back in the uh, Plane Savers uh, headquarters here, uh, courtesy of ENA, which is really awesome. And I got a special surprise for you. Check this out here. We got the Plane Savers Normandy crew. This group of crazy people have flown in uh, from Texas. Hi, Mikey and the Plane Savers crew. This is episode two of Plane Savers Normandy, taking the spirit of FZ 668 to Normandy for the 75th anniversary of D Day. This is the crew hat for a mission. Very few of these hats will be auctioned by Mikey to support Plane Savers. Stay tuned for details. Our jet's been in maintenance since last week. This is scheduled maintenance, nothing special for the North Atlantic crossing. We have 41 items on the work order, including numerous inspections and a few time based overhauls. Owen Younger on the left is a vital member of our team. He manages the jet and is one of the pilots, though he will not be joining us on this trip. Owen survived the crash of a Cirrus SR-20 last year, caused by the loss of an aileron just after rotation due to missing safety wire. The NTSB investigation is ongoing, but this event reminds us that our lives are in the hands of our airframe and power plant mechanics. Some, some kind of thing called safety wire and safety wire pliers and spinny contraption, whatever. Uh, evidently, it's supposed to go on Cirrus ailerons, but you'd never know it. We've had some great news this week. FAA issued letters of authorization required for our trip. Also, our ground handling is scheduled at all 12 airports on our itinerary, and our accommodations are finalized. We're nearly ready to go. Even better news came in a few minutes ago. The jet's out of maintenance and ready for a test flight. Mikey, we look forward to seeing you and the rest of the Plane Savers team on the 31st of May. We have seats open to Goose Bay for you and Stella if you want to join us, but I suspect you'll be quite busy then. Cheers from Texas. We'll see you soon. They have a special surprise. Uh, they actually have, you know, I was talking about this on the live stream, uh, Plane Savers merchandise is going to be ultra rare, uh, but they've made some custom hats here. So check this out. We've got some adjustable Plane Savers Normandy hats, and these 
this crazy crew is actually on their way to Normandy with the citation. So we're going to sign these hats, uh, and they're going to take them over there. And uh, at the end, we'll auction them off or maybe do some giveaways and all that fun stuff. But a special extra surprise, which is going to go to Normandy. We, we actually have a part of the aircraft right here. This was off the original tail cone, the plane savers first around the world. So I'll sign this, and this will go with the crew, and they can take some pictures of it uh, along the way. And Excellent. Oh, that's awesome stuff, right? Eh? Excellent. That's great. So you guys go. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, David Metters. We're of the uh, Plane Savers Normandy crew. We're headed over to Normandy for the 6th of June. We're taking a piece of the airplane and the hat that I'm wearing. There's going to be a few available on eBay. We're going to follow the World War II ferry routes through Greenland, Iceland, Scotland, and on into France. Awesome. Thank you. That is great. I need Stella, though. She's my hero. Hey, Stella. Oh, my God. I'm just trying to do it. All the, all the, anywhere, all the paintings you do. It's a great job. Thank you. Did we get everybody, Mikey? I think we did. Okay, good. I mean, you know, that's the easy part now. Now you got to get to Normandy. Yeah. Benoit, what do you think? Uh, it's first time, uh, first time that I have to sign something else than one invoice. So, uh, <laughs> so good luck. We're off to Normandy. <laughs> See you on YouTube. Good luck on the 6th. <laughs> okay, guys, I am sequestered myself in the Plane Savers uh, classroom here. Uh, the music outside is crazy. They're playing all the best hits. Unfortunately, not good for YouTube. I'm not making this up, folks. Uh, uh, outside music is death to these videos, but we've been saved. Uh, oh, but before that, uh, I put the three hats up on eBay right now. Links down below, folks. Three eBay items at once, uh, which gives you guys a better chance. I know sometimes eBay items get very high. Uh, hopefully these three, uh, one of them will be in a price range that is acceptable for a lot of people. Um, but that being said, uh, it's out in the world. So these hats are going to be flown to Normandy uh, with all our signatures on them and be shipped June 15th. So June 15th, these hats will be back in Texas and be shipped. We got uh, three hats, one of three, two of three, and the whole nine yards. So talking about the music before, so Pierre, Pierre had a caller quits. So the music's a little too loud for us today. Uh, so not only is it anti-YouTube, Pierre. I have had, I <laughs> where, where we're lo the, where the DC3 is located is right next to the speakers. Uh, you can, can you hear that? Oops, oops. Anyway, uh, so definitely be checking out the air show tomorrow. It's going to be bumping. But uh, we've been saved by the hangar rats. I just received a FedEx jump drive right here. I haven't even kind of watched it yet. Uh, the hangar rats are going to dive deep in some DC-3 stuff. So thank you guys. Uh, let's cut to that now. Hey, how's it going? This is Bill and Mike. And we're uh, hangar rats from Fort Worth, Texas. And we're going to do some DC-3 fun facts. So hopefully Mikey can somehow fill some space in his videos give him some content <laughs> so what we're going to talk about today is i think it was on episode six maybe when he did the history of the airplane i'm going to throw this up this is in the uh, mikey mikey font here so what he said was i thought hey what we'll do is we'll explain what mikey was saying on the um on as far as when the aircraft was born and what all that meant so biggest thing is it said our dc3 was born january 24th 1944 that could mean a lot of things that could mean the day it finished production line, when they, they put the data plate on? They started production. It, could, it, it just depends on where they put the data plate in. Different manufacturers do it different. That's just a thing. It could be when, uh, it could be the date that the Army accepted it. In today's world, it's a DD-250, where the Army actually accepts it. Back then, probably the, the um, tenant government representative was probably Army Air Corps, because it was an Army Air Corps plant. So it could have been that date. So it could be a bunch of dates. So January 24th, 1944. And again, uh, Benoit, he's the guy that probably knows everything. He's got the history <laughs> on it. He probably knows. But when you go into the paperwork, uh, born on date could be the uh, contract date. It could be the um, final assembly of the company when they actually put the data plate on at the end of the production line. It could be after production flight. Or it could be the actual signing over the government. So that's kind of what that means. So that's actually kind of a... It was right around then, though. They were building, how many aircraft a day do you think they were building? 
I mean, DC threes are huge. A few. How many? What do you think? One, two. I don't know, 10? 15. That was a good guess. 15 freaking airplanes. I mean, let's talk about aluminum. Um, okay, he had, what else he had? Ba, ba, ba. Serial number 12253. 12253 is the, we use a lot of times down here, we use serial number. But it can also be, also we also call it constructor's number. You'll see CN. So that's the Douglas number. That's not what the Army Air Corps or the RCAF would use to track it. They would use the contract number. Um, next thing is the designation. So C47A-5-DK. Probably, and I'm not a genius on the Douglas stuff, hard to believe, but if it's like a lot of others, and again, the, the, the Douglas DC-3 boffins will correct me, which is great, pile on. But C-47 is a basic model, A, basic model, C-47A. Dash 5 is probably block 5. So it's probably, as they probably have block 5, block 10, probably if it was like B-51s or B-25s. Uh, they do the same thing with F-22s and that kind of stuff now. And then DK could have been unique for uh, Dakota configuration, going to RCAF, RAF, Australia, New Zealand, anything in the British Empire. So that could have actually been a special spec build block of aircraft. So that's what that means. Tail number. This is one that folks get kind of messed up on. The tail number is 42-92451. So that's the contract number. So you say, well, wait a minute. The 42, what's a 42 mean? The 42 is the contract, the year the contract was let. When was the aircraft built? 44. Why would it have a different number? Well, the contract, like you said, was written two years prior. Two years prior. And it was probably open-ended where they just kept adding quantities to it. Well, and that's how you get to your block five. It could be the fifth block of aircraft yeah. on that contract. Yeah, it could be. Exactly. So they were they were ripping them out of there so fast. So what they would do is if this was an Army Air Corps plane, and you've seen this on Air, Army aircraft, the Army, U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force do it the same way. U.S. Navy and Marines in the U.S. do it the same way as far as their numbering. But you would have on the tail of that aircraft... What you would see is 292451. I'm going to put this up there. But you'd see, that's what you see. The contract number's on the top, but the actual number painted on the aircraft, they drop the four off because the four is given. Okay? And here's one in, uh, I forget where, which museum this is. I'll hold this one up. This is probably a terrible, terrible video. But this one here, this, this is what you typically see. They drop the four off. So that's what that looks like. And then the aircraft went over to Canada. And that's probably when, probably when it got the roundels and some of the other, the uh, ZF markings and all that, was probably when it went to Canada. Probably when it left the U.S. in Oak City, it was probably, it probably had a U.S. contract number on it. And it probably went out with no stars and bars, just a green aircraft. Airplane going by. Um, hey, we're at an airport. <laughs> Actually, that's kind of good. In this hangar, we, <laughs> we're tearing them apart. So anyway, the, the, um, that's the deal there, is that's what the number you'd see on an Army Air Corps. So when it went up there, it probably had that number painted over. It was just lacquer and whatnot. In fact, to that point, here's a picture of a, uh, of a cutie. That's the way they did it back then. They didn't do, so this is a shout out to Stella. <laughs> Apparently she's doing it right. So they, they brushed a lot of that stuff on. That's just the way they did it. So that's that. And there's a bunch of other stencils and stuff. I don't care about that. Um, and then the most important thing is the, the DC-3, C-47s were built at three plants. One was the Long Beach. What happened to the Long Beach plant? Gone. 2018, plowed. It's an industrial park. The other place was Santa Monica. So, so Long Beach was the original plant, I believe. Again, Douglas guys are going to beat me up. <laughs> Santa Monica plant was the other plant that they built DC-3s. I think they built A-20s, a bunch of other stuff over there. Might have done uh, Douglas dive bomber or uh, SPDs and that kind of stuff. Santa Monica, that plant was raised in September 77. It was wiped out. The Oklahoma City plant, which is where uh, DTD is, was built, um, they built 5,354, according to Wikipedia, over 5,000 C-47s from that plant. Um, 13 planes a day. I'm wrong. 13 planes a day. So that means 26 engines a day coming in on, on uh, rail cars, landing gears, propellers, radios, compasses, seat cushions, all that stuff. Tons of aluminum. Tons of aluminum. And that that facility now is a Tinker Air Force Base building 3001. And that same room that the DC C forty sevens, pardon me, that was a government owned, probably government owned contract operate contractor operated plant. 
where those C-47s are coming down the line is now B-52s and KC-135s. That's a depot for the United States Air Force uh, Logistics Center up there in Oak City. So that's, every now and then we see a 52 coming in here, or 135. Most of the time they're doing a maintenance run coming down here, because they're just up the road a couple hours. So that's how you read the registration number. I think that's all I have on that. That's it. Did you learn anything? A little Did bit. you learn anything? A little bit. Okay, cool. Now, here's the question. Yes. In 13 aircraft a day, how many rivets is that bucked? Scullions. Scullions. Well, you got to remember, too, that they, they had engine mounts and stuff like that. Now, if it was like Fort Worth, which was Air Force Plan Number 4, where they built B-24s and B-32s, they had their own acetylene plant. They didn't, they didn't, uh, they had, on the west side of that plant, it's a big rail spur. That plant is still now making uh, F-35s. That was a B-24 plant, um, and then they transitioned to B-32s. So that stuff was all over this area. Huge. So anyway, that's fun facts. C-47, fun facts from the hangar rats. <laughs> He's Mike. He's Bill. Oh, he got it right. That's it. Signing off. We'll catch you kids later. Thank you, Bill and Mike. That was amazing. You can hear the music pumping outside. Um, this has been the hardest episode of Plane Savers to make solely because of the noise pollution. But I'm going to find something very creative to do tomorrow because I want to show you the air show. I want to show you all the cool airplanes. Uh, it's going to be excellent. So thank you for joining us today. Um, check out the hats on eBay. Huge thanks to the Hangar Rats for pushing this episode to a number uh, a, a watch time that people just enjoy thank you guys so much uh, a huge shout out to the crew the plane savings normandy crew uh, thanks for stopping in all the way from texas hanging rats from texas today is the texas episode have fun be safe and we'll be seeing you in the next one there's only what five more days to go after this folks it's coming and i want to thank you for joining us and we'll see you very soon bye